how do you attract better things in life? How do you get what you want? Are questions that I have asked myself, as I'm sure so many have, in more or less similar words. And then we discovered the law of attraction or the law of assumption and we thought we found that answer. And then these manifesting principles taught to us through books and videos promised to be that answer. You know, things like detach, affirm, believe, script, do all of these things and in doing them, we would be somewhere better by now, somewhere better within our own personal lives. But now it's been years and the total life-changing quantum leap type of results that we were expecting has yet to be fully materialized and maybe you're confused and frankly tired of trying. The art of creating your life to be one that you absolutely adore can unfortunately get overcomplicated at times and I do not believe that this is anything malicious. Everyone just wants to help after all. But every so often we stumble upon something that refocuses our attention, clarifies everything we've learned so far, and motivates us to try again. And the eccentric excerpt I'm going to share with you today, I think, could very well be that dose of clarity that you may need to convince you not to give up on your ambitions just yet. Being passionate as expressed in the idea of play. Play with everything that happens in your reality. Really having an attitude of gratitude toward it so that you receive every experience you have in a playful way and thus by receiving it in that playful way can do that much more with it. Be that much more creative with it. Allow it to be that much more flexible malleable, stretchable, changeable, formable. Play. Play. That energy is what allows physical reality to become like clay. Play with the clay of physical reality. If you approach it from an energy state of being of a lower vibration, that's when the clay hardens. That's when it's unchanging in that state. But as soon as you start being more playful about what's going on in your life, it softens and becomes clay-like, plastic, malleable, formable, changeable. This is where physical mind can once again get caught up in its own sense of control. And that is that when we talk about the idea that what you put out is what you get back, the physical mind because again of how it looks at physical reality as being the only thing there is, we'll assume that if it doesn't see an exact one-to-one -one reflection in the circumstances that surround you with what it is that you believe you're giving off, you will think that something has failed. Again, I remind you, this is where you get caught in your own paradoxical trap even though it is true that what you put out is what you get back, and by being in a certain state of being, that will determine what the circumstances around you are. The first stage of that, the first manifestation of that will be usually, especially in your world of space and time, usually the first reflection will look the same as it used to. Because this gives you the opportunity to reinforce the state of being by responding to the circumstances that look the same, differently than you did before, and that is where you then allow the circumstances to truly reflect that you have changed and demonstrate that you have changed by responding to the circumstances differently, even if they look the same as they used to. That's how it works. So the first reflection will usually be an echo of how it used to look. You must not respond to the echo as if that's the representation of your new state. You must respond to it 
in a sense, as if you know it's just an echo and that what you're putting out now, the new response to the old circumstances, that will solidify the vibration of your preferred state of being and truly allow the circumstances to change themselves and take their cue from the new vibration you're putting out, which is the absolute certainty that you are different. Because if you respond to the old echo in the same way that you used to, you are not different. So in a sense, it's like you're testing yourself. It's like you're giving yourself an opportunity to decide whether you really do want the circumstances to change by first presenting yourself very often with the same set of circumstances to see if you respond differently to them, making a clear commitment that you have, in fact, vibrationally changed your state of being. Once you have then done that and respond differently to the same set of circumstances then you have established that you truly have changed and then the circumstances can reflect that change so don't be fooled by the echo into thinking that you've done something wrong or by labeling it the same way you used to if you find yourself reacting to it in the same way that you used to you have not changed so that's the self-reinforcing mechanism that gives you the opportunity to decide whether you really want to change that circumstance or not. Because again, remember, all belief systems, by definition, are self-reinforcing. They have to be. If belief systems were not self-reinforcing and making themselves seem like the only thing to believe in, you wouldn't be able to have an actual distinct discrete belief system experience and because they come with a self-reinforcing mechanism when you change your vibrational state one of the last things to fade will be the self-reinforcing mechanism it will present the same scenario to you once again but it will be presented to you not as a concrete reality but only as an illusion only as an echo of what was to give you a chance to really decide that you will break through that self-reinforcing mechanism by defining and labeling it differently than you used to, proving that you have changed, thus allowing the reflection to then truly come. Circumstances do not determine state of being. State of being determines circumstances. Circumstances don't matter. Only state of being matters. Circumstances don't matter. They do not create materialization. Only state of being matters. Only state of being materializes experiences. And then choose the state of being that you prefer. And then redefine the circumstance from that state of being so that you can erase the echo and then allow the true reflection to then take form from your state of being. What I just read for you was taken from a very eccentric teacher known as Bashar, and it was stated many, many years ago in a seminar. And when I first heard it, it left absolutely nothing to the imagination with regard to the law of attraction and the subsequent law of assumption. Speaking of the law of assumption, we are taught very heavily to persist. There's this whole topic of persistence. And that can get kind of confusing for some people. What do we persist in? Why do we persist? This excerpt explains what to persist in. We persist in the state of the wish fulfilled. We persist in the new and changed, improved state of being, the one that we want to be reflected back to us on a physical 3D level. It explains why we persist. Because there will be an echo of the old reality, the one that we're not too fond of anymore, when we first get started in our journey. That's why we persist to get past that echo. I truly hope that everything I just stated straight off the top of my head 
makes sense and translates well whether it does or doesn't however i encourage you to re-listen to that statement made by bashar earlier in the video this chapter because it really does explain and answer any and all question that one could have on this entire concept it's very clear is what it is i like that the questions like how long do desires take to materialize you can find the answer for it right there in that statement what do i do with myself in the meantime how do i respond when things seemingly don't go my way and more i want to highlight a quote from this excerpt before i leave because i feel as though it summarizes even more concisely everything that was just stated above where he says if you find yourself reacting to it in the same way that you used to, you have not changed. It being your undesired physical 3D environment and you not being changed in reference to your state of being. This entire statement could be read as a manual for attracting more desired experiences into your life and at the root of it lies a very simple and timeless reminder that your reality won't change until you do. And with that being said, thank you for watching this short video. I truly do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I trust you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more content just like this one. So, how did you like today's video and what video would you like to see next? You let me know in the comment section down below. I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Toodles.